seen nothing yet. Classification. Many writers and directors have argued that nowadays it's the writers that self-censor for why work on a film that may never get picked up. Does classification protect the public? Does classification protect the filmmaker? These are some of the questions we'll be asking. First, let's take a look at the BBFC. The BBFC was established in 1912 by the British film industry as a body that could make informed judgments of acceptable standards in film. Today, their highly experienced regulators seek to protect the public. Your move, creep. Help parents to make informed viewing choices. Recognise and respect adult freedom of choice within the law. You know what happens if you do another turn in the joint? Fuck your father in the shower and then have a snack. You gonna charge me, dickhead? Respond to and reflect changing social attitudes towards media content through proactive public consultation and research. Advertising has us chasing cars and clothes. Working jobs we hate so we can buy shit we don't need. Provide a cost-effective, efficient classification service. Not from now, this Hollywood big shot's gonna give you what you want. Too late, they start shooting in a week. I'm gonna make them an offer he can't refuse. Work in partnership with the industry to develop innovative service models to provide content advice which support emerging media delivery systems. <laughs> Provide an effective service to enforcement agencies. Ow! Fucking fascist! Stay out of Malibu, Lebowski! Stay out of Malibu, deadbeat! Oliver Stone's Natural Born Killers was censored by the American MPAA in 1994. In the film, over 150 cuts were made. When it was submitted to the BBFC, there were calls for it to be banned by the press, who linked the film to killings in America and France. On inspection, there was no evidence that any of the accused in each case had ever seen the film, and in December of 1994, the already edited version was awarded a cinema certification by the BBFC. The film would then be released on video in 1996, however, due to the horrific events of March 1996, in which several schoolchildren were murdered by a government in Scotland, the release of the video was cancelled by its own distributors indefinitely. In 2002, the full director's cut version of the film, restoring the three minutes of cuts required in the US in 1994, was submitted to the BBFC and classified 18 uncut. Oliver Stone spoke about the scenes originally cut and how he felt they negatively impacted on the film. The opening diner scene. This scene gives us a sense of the madness and the seriality of the violence. Tom Sizemore, strangling of the prostitute. Here, the sex and death have been linked to make sense within the context of the film. <laughs> the pharmacy scene. A Rodney King style beating was heavily cut. This simply reflected the media coverage of the era. <laughs> Mickey's hotel room with a female hostage. This exemplifies Mickey's ruthlessness throughout the film. <laughs> The riot scene. The whole world is coming apart. When people march to different extremes, conflict always ensues. A shot of a knife through a window and a bullet hole through a hand. The issue with Natural Born Killers was that the overall tone and energy of the film was too high, but in cutting much of the black humour, which made it easier to watch, the film became something much grimmer and more realistic. Every heart, every heart Classification or censorship? We asked the public and professionals for their opinion. I think having the BBFC is positive in the industry because um, I believe censorship should always be there. Obviously, if I had children in the future, um, I'd want certain aspects of films to be 
sense in. I think if you're making a film designed for a specific audience, obviously, yeah. but, uh, the woman in uh, yeah. black. Yeah, women in black, yeah, yeah. Obviously, they needed to kind of aim for a market where mm. Harry Potter fans would, would be able to go and see it, so yeah. they had to tone down the edit of the film and maybe the writing of the film to yeah. kind of justify that. Yeah, but I think now it, it's, it's very hard to get a film banned or censored. I mean, the last yeah. one was um, The Human Centipede, which mm. is obviously set out from the get-go to shock and yeah. you know, be banned. That's yeah. obviously aided in its publicity, but yeah. I think filmmakers have got more, more kind of scope now than they did previously, so maybe it's opening up. Um, no, I don't think it should be, uh, they should be censored, you know, because like, then you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to, because you're, you're then basically like, blocking the director's creative, you're not letting him use his creativity to its full potential in the film. So in, in everything we've done, I've, 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 we've never really considered it. Have you? No, I mean, especially our last film was, um, when it came to classify it, all we kind of thought about it was uh, what themes are in there and specifically like uh, how, how many profanities there are. And right. I think we counted as like uh, 30 uses of, of the uh, F word. In the development stages and stuff like that, th that never came up, nobody ever thought about that. They didn't think, oh well. No, 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 not really. I, th I think that there's, that there's certain taboos in society which yeah. always remain. I mean, yeah. It, it, anything involving the death of children is probably the, yeah. the, the yeah. kind of biggest one. And yeah, definitely. You know, that, yeah. That, that's where you kind of have to really look at the material you're making. Yeah, yeah. Uh, basically, through acting, I, I think that my experience of censorship has been that uh, whilst portraying a role which may be on the page in the script, it's, it's written as a swear word, and then what you find is later on in the process when it's gone into post production, you would, you would be brought in by the director to replace that swear word with something which, um, w w which was suitable for a different kind of audience. The BBFC says classification is to protect not only the public but also the filmmaker. With the prevalence of the internet in today's society, how important do you think classification is and do you see it having any value in the future? Well, I think that the difference is, is um, with the BBFC obviously being British, it's actually mm. a, a law which is there to, you know, offer guidance, but it's also law to, mm. depending on the age you're, you're there. I mean, the, the American one's completely different. Yeah. That it, the American classification system is completely voluntary. Yeah. But, you know, so you, you can't get distribution deals without it. That's right. But yeah. it's not law abiding, and it's there more for guidance. And I think that that's the main role of the BBFC now, is to actually kind of guide, Yeah. you know. And what, if any, issues have you encountered when it comes to classification or certification? Yeah, the, 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 the last film we produced, um, the major issue was um, trade, trademark and copyright. Right. Um, very naively, we kind of thought that you could just kind of use um, uniforms, for example, but they're actually copyrighted to someone. So when you come to actually getting your film out there and distribute it, you realise you have all of these processes which you need to... Um, check and double check and right, right. like the last one we've had to send off to three different people to clear different things. Yeah. Like we've had to contact the Royal Marines and get the them to view the film. Yeah. Make sure it's all okay and clear it. As a director, does the issue of classification come into your thought process when making a film? When directing a scene, um, yeah it does. You give yourself options. So if you're directing a scene that um, is potentially too violent, uh, the difference between like a 12 or an 18, 15, that you give yourself options in the edit. So you do a couple of different versions and you, you would um, have foresight to the edit so you could reduce the, um, the violence, essentially, or I suppose you could do it with a sex scene. Um, and then in the edit, when we speak to the sales agents, sometimes they can say to us, like, we could make X percentage more if you can take that scene back because we can make it to a 15 and we can reach a bigger audience. So yeah, it definitely comes into uh, for from from the filming stage onwards. I mean, one thing we did, we did realise as well when we came to classify the film yeah. was uh, you don't just um, classify it for, for one distribution method. Yeah. So you, you classify for theatrical release. Okay. You then also have to classify separately for um, a 
DVD or Blu-ray release. Right. Okay. And separately again for video on demand. But I, I think that's always always the job of the, um, uh, who has classified the film. They have to move with the times and yeah. move, move with what public opinion yeah. is.